This is why the Boston Celtics have started 10-1 and, and currently are on fire, with what would be one of the greatest turnover percentages in NBA history through 10 games. Coach Stevens has his team locked in. You'll see if the Celts can keep this up, along with Kemba Walker's early impact, meet Boston's shocking bench mob, and much more. Shout out to Ona, who says the Lakers at full strength are the title favorites because of AD being the best big in the league and their role players, including Rajon Rondo, whose return Ona thinks will help them. Great take. The top five in Speaks Get Yearly Awards. Celtics question for next vid shout out coming up. The departure of two staples in the Celtics organization in Kyrie Irving and Al Horford has somewhat stunningly turned out to be an addition by subtraction. Coach Brad Stevens doesn't have to worry about arguing with Kyrie and having his decision making constantly questioned. And without Uncle Drew, new voices have stepped up within the Celtics locker room and led this squad. You'll meet them in a minute, but partly due to that leadership, the Celtics have been incredibly smart with their possessions. With 11.7 turnovers average per game, Boston leads the second place Orlando Magic by over one turnover. That's significantly the biggest gap between any two teams in TOs per night. But when you look at the advanced stats, through nine games, Boston had what would have been the best turnover percentage in NBA history. And through 11 games, they're still at number seven all time. While a lot of credit can go to Kemba Walker for quarterbacking the offense to functionality, a big reason for the lack of giveaways is Brown, Tatum, and Hayward's ability to quickly create any shot they want off the bounce, which limits the potential for turnovers. But it's not the fastest up and down offense in basketball. Boston's right in the middle of the pack in terms of pace. Steven's offensive system allows its deadly perimeter scorers to have a fairly even amount of shots and their pace and turnover numbers prove they take just the right amount of time per possession. An extremely great sign early on for a Celtic team that showed extreme dysfunction on this end last spring in the second round. The first change man from those very playoffs is 2016 number three pick Jalen Brown, who's elevated so far in 2019-20 into a supremely efficient 20-point scorer. The 23-year-olds effectively using fakes, fades, and cuts at a different level than in years past. But you should really be taking into account and what's made Jalen a top producer on the top team in the East is his clearly vamped and frankly scary ball handling ability. He's damn under control in the pick and roll, whether he's showing off crossovers, hesitations, or both at the same time. The reason I say it's a scary handle though is because Brown's 6'7 with a seven foot wingspan and it's rare players that his size can handle at the elite level he's shown thus far. Next to him on the wing in his third season, Jason Tatum's averaging a career high in points, steals, assists, and rebounds per game. Despite shooting one of 18 against Dallas and eight of 23 most recently in San Francisco, every game this month, the 21-year-old Tatum shot at least 45% from the field. Tatum's offensive repertoire consisting of jab steps, Kobe-esque up fakes, step back threes, and hesitation freeze dribbles allow him to finesse defenders, and that crafty, pure shot creating ability is a perfect mix with the brute force attacking style of Jalen Brown. And up to this point, you haven't heard of Hayward's hot start in his first eight games because again, he's dealing with injury out the next six weeks with a broken hand before yet another stroke of misfortune for Gordon. He looked like his former Utah Jazz all-star self, highlighted by a 17 of 20 from the field, 39 point outing in Cleveland. Hayward was shooting 43% from deep and 55% overall from the field. The aforementioned young forwards on court growth and maturity bodes well for Gordon as well, with opposing defenders at his positions game planning all focused on stopping the young athletic phenoms Tatum and Brown. Because of that, Hayward's able to get a significant amount of open looks. Before you know it, he'll be back spacing the floor, making the Celtics even scarier, but a collapse or even cooling off from their hot start doesn't seem like it's coming anytime soon, even without him. You're seeing the title correctly, the listed at 6'3", speedy bulldog isn't living by his offensively minded reputation. We'll look at that sneaky, scrappy effort but on the other end, Kemba keeps fluent ball movement consistently, far from the avid dribbler former point guard Kyrie. Last year, Uncle Drew's ball-dominant dribbling exhibitions were pretty to watch, but had the opposite effect on Boston's offense. Defenders would collapse to him, the offense would stagnate. 
Kemba's hockey assist this year, though, and trust to let his teammates go to work. Keep the four other players on the floor with him, first off in a shooting rhythm, but also motivated knowing they have a chance to get the ball. Combining the facts of Walker's better fit with the Celts than Kyrie and his 25 points per game of relief, a nearly 45% from three-point range, and this looks like the perfect acquisition for Boston. Transitioning to defense, we start with Walker, whose effort guarding the biggest, most athletic NBA players in the world can be an influence to undersized guards everywhere. Kemba's first among all guards and fourth in the NBA overall in charges taken. He has supremely active hands both in the passing lane and when he's guarding one-on-one -on -one matchups. That meshed with his elite lateral quicks based around desperate, scrappy effort have given Boston an upgrade defensively at their point guard spot from last year. You may not love watching defense, but Walker's rotations, deflections, and overall determination are all evident. Meanwhile, at center, Boston seemingly has a gaping hole with their rim protection. However, when analyzing Boston's defense right now and what it has the potential to become by playoff time, there's some overlooked factors you can't forget. Celtic wings Jason and Jalen have a combined 14-foot wingspan. They're more than capable of moving their feet or really just taking one step over and stretching out their hands to recover for a block on a slasher shot. But those two cover a ton of ground in the perimeter. It's tough to get by them in the first place. And Ennis Cantor's also overlooked as a shot blocker. Of course, he earns his keep scoring in the post, but as a post defender, his strength definitely makes an impact. But making his living disrupting beastly perimeter scores, usually off the pine, now starting with Hayward's injury and leading you to meet the abundance of Celtics' solid role players, is Marcus Smart. Watching the 3 and D menace of a lockdown defender Smart digging in and going to work is simply an art. When most players put two hands up to contest and live with the result when a player's coming in for the layup, Marcus relentlessly fights to make his opponent's attempt as difficult as a shot as possible by reaching in at opportune moments. That energy's extremely contagious, can help you get crucial stops down the stretch, yet it also displays Smart's leadership, being the backbone of the Celts' defense. He's as vocal as any player in the NBA, holding his young teammates accountable, and when Hayward returns, an ideal defensive six man for this offensive powerhouse of a Celtic squad. Without the Kyrie outbursts, Brad Stevens has infused a tremendous amount of focus into this group. Stevens now has a point guard that's been to the playoffs twice in eight seasons and not since 2016. Kemba's clearly hungry to win and the attitude, poise, vocal maturity, and most prominently positivity from Walker after the Uncle Drew disaster last year has really helped his coach. Since there's zero dramatic distractions, Brad's put all of his energy into managing his team's mindset and of course scheming on both ends. Before you see statistical Celtic beastliness and if Boston can keep this start up, to the role players where between stretch big Daniel Tice and the aforementioned post-up fiend Ennis Cantor, offensively this team's center rotation is solid enough. The sophomore Robert Williams adds to that with his physicality that really helps out on the glass for the Celtics. He's also a capable defender. Their recent lottery pick Romeo Lankford just got sent to the D-League, but 26-year-old rookie Javante Green stepping in for Hayward nicely on both ends of the floor. Quick, strong rookie sniper backing up Kemba is the rising 21-year-old Carson Edwards, who just dropped a career-best 18 points with four triples on the Wizards. And lastly, the second-year man, 30-year-old point guard Brad Wanamaker, who's shooting 54% from the field. Over the last few years, we have to give a ton of credit to Celts president Danny Ainge for finding these perfectly fitting role players to fill out his squad. The first bit of Celtics statistical beastliness is that every player in the top five in fourth quarter offensive rating so far in 2019-20 is a Celtic, as Jalen Brown significantly leads the way, and Hayward, Walker, Tyson, Tatum are also proving to be some of the most valued NBA players in crunch time. How about Carson Edwards exploding for eight threes in one quarter in a preseason game? Thirdly, the last time the Celtics started 10-1 and one was in 2008 with their lethal, generationally great big four of Pierce Garnett, Allen, and Rondo that went on to win the first Celtics title in 22 years. Question will be if they can top 2017-18 start of 15-2 or 2008-2009 start of 27-2. 
Lastly is Kemba Walker shooting one of 11 in the first three quarters and then shooting five of eight in the fourth quarter to steal a win against the Young Warriors. But the basis regarding Boston's ability to sustain this hot start is their transformation from a dysfunctional, unclearly led group into the hungry, focused group with vamped ball movement and every piece in the right place, allowing for continuity on and off the floor. But let me know your thoughts on if the Celtics can sustain this hot start for next video shoutout. Hit subscribe if you're new and enjoyed. This was D-Flow. I'll see you next video.